is session three of GitLab Technical Writing Fundamentals. We are going to pick up where we left off at the end of session two. Looking at a table that is not parallel. This table is from the style guide, the documentation style guide. And the second column under what belongs here, the entries are not parallel. The first entry starts with a compound adjective. Second entry starts with a noun, compound adjective, noun, adjective, verb, verb, noun. Since most of these start with a noun, we're going to edit to make them consistent and parallel. We changed user related documentation to documentation for users. Now all the entries in the table start with a noun except for legal documents about contributing to GitLab. I could not come up with an edit, a quick edit for that that was uh, not awkward. So left that one alone. I changed the heading, what belongs here to contents. And because these change, it's better than it was, we do iterative changes, went ahead and merged. Documentation also needs to avoid promises that a task is easy or simple because it might not be to the person who is reading the documentation and attempting to perform the task. Instead of you can easily configure your server to send email, simply tell people how to do it. To configure your server to send email, complete the following steps. We get a lot of questions about hyphenation particularly for a feature called the to-do list. In the phrase to do, in the term to-do list, to-do is a compound adjective modifying the word list. So it's hyphenated. If you were to say, I have a to-do, that's a noun. And we don't hyphenate nouns in that form. I have a to do is rather awkward, so we suggest using to do items. And if you'll note, to do modifies items, so it's hyphenated. The documentation style guide for GitLab contains almost all of the information that we have gone over in these sessions. And there is a link here, so you can go check it out. Some other high level suggestions are use we for recommendations, not GitLab recommends, but we recommend. It's okay to use contractions. We use they as a singular pronoun because that's inclusive language. An example of that is Pat needs help, they can't do it alone. And we avoid wordiness, we edit for wordiness. If a oh, sentence has more than 25 words, it's too long. The fastest way to make a topic more readable is to write in shorter sentences. So how do we test for all of the things that we have talked about? We use linting. The pipeline includes markdown lint and veil documentation tests. Markdown lint checks for formatting and veil checks for language. For markdown lint, all the issues break the pipeline and you have to go fix it. However, in veil, there are three levels of suggestion and only errors break the pipeline. We have a lot of information about the testing that we do at the included link in the third bullet. So I hope you can check it out. Our next session, is going to cover concepts, tasks, references, and troubleshooting topics. So see you there.